Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Fider, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology message for the last week of 2017. It's the 30th of December 2017 until January 6th, 2018. Yippee! So, Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, for everybody celebrating any kind of holiday in any kind of religion or belief system, Blessed be your days and blessed be your joys and may we all love creation and life together. Amen. And may we all have a really magical 2018. A 2018 in which we'll show ourselves that we're better than we hoped we are. That we can overcome the struggles that come our way. That we are triumphant over the challenges that we are facing. And that in the midst of it all we're still focused enough to acknowledge how blessed we really are and health above all it will be healthy amen so all through this week we have this conjunction that's going to be exact on the seventh between mars the planet of male energy and initiative entrepreneurship all our male attributes both as females and males our sexual uh, energy and of course, some of the um, more feisty, angry energy, testosteronic energy that we all hold. And it joins the planet of Jupiter that expands everything. And, and it's like plugging it to the electricity, so to speak, and giving it power, amplifying it. And as I said, it's going to be exact in January 7th, but we're feeding this uh, conjunction all through the week and it's squaring the lunar nodes as well so this is a watershed moment for the, bo both these planets in their planetary cycle it's a new planetary cycle for uh, Mars and Jupiter and it's a time that new things can spring and be born in your life regarding uh, uh, new endeavors and uh, new entrepreneurship new projects it's a time that we can set goals and actually achieve these goals and what is it all about? It's about what we do, Mars, and what we believe in Jupiter and how these two interact in our life leading us forwards. So definitely a time to push the gas, but not pushing it too extravagantly, not jumping higher than we can actually, uh, taking a bigger bite than we can actually swallow, but, that, but about doing it professionally and staying focused and staying uh, uh, um, full of humility and realism, understanding that jumping too high would just cause disappointment in the later stages because we won't be able to push that rainbow, I'm sorry, to pull that rainbow from the clouds to the grounds of reality. This is about taking those, taking that inspiration and harnessing it to actually feel our sails here on earth and sail these seas and go somewhere with that divine wind. So, this is an energetic build-up through, the the, the, through the next couple of days until the 1st of January. And I hope uh, we're going to have a blast of, uh, of uh, New Year's Eve because of that energetical build-up. What do we need to watch? Because this is a full moon, not only a full moon, a super moon. One of two super moons happening in January. So this is a super moon which already makes it very emotional and it is in the sign of cancer which is already emotional and melodramatic. So we can be very sensitive and we can get caught up in the emotional webs for better or for worse. You know, the Native American people always thought of this moon as the wolf moon because they said that outside the tipis, outside their camps, that would be the time of year. Or that would be the full moon in which they would hear the wolves howl strongest because the wolves were hungry and it was the coldest the darkest time of the year and at these times curdling uh, uh, um, coming together you know and 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 
cradling ourselves within the known and the familiar, feeling that warmth, that affinity of our clan, our family, our loved ones, people we feel that are near to us, that is the sign of the time. Get a little closer around the campfire and feel the warmth. Feel the blessing of having that familiar womb, which of course everything I'm saying is connecting to cancer, that familiar space, that safe harbor that can shelter us from the elements at this time. Of course, we're talking about the northern hemisphere of the globe. In the southern hemisphere, this is a time to take that love, in, in, in a sense, and that feeling of, um, of safety and actually enjoying it through summer. So uh, in, in a world that is sunny, in a world that is warm. So it's a very different analogy to what we are used to here in Europe and in the States. But let's, let's stay in the Northern Hemisphere, as that's where I live and most of you. But uh, I would love to hear about how you experience it in the Southern Hemisphere. If I have viewers in the Southern Hemisphere, Australia, New Zealand, uh, uh, South Africa, I would love to know how you experience over there. <coughs> Excuse me. So that would be the time to actually come together and, and, and use the clan or the family's energy to actually keep us through the storm, keep us through the night. And not only is this a full supermoon in Cancer, it is opposing Venus, the planet of relationship and love and income and everything really that satisfies us in our lives, that brings satisfactions, satisfaction to our body and soul. So after Christmas, after spending time with the family, after seeing friends or not seeing them, you know, all this emotional charge has been going in through the last few weeks. And now, this could be a time as we hit that super moon that relationships that are not satisfying we could turn critical towards or people can, thor can, can turn critical towards us saying hey you know what this doesn't cut it anymore you know what I'm angry with you because you were such a boop during Christmas you know or during New Year's or because you didn't you, you weren't really there you know so this is this this is a period you know that can really bring up those tensions to the surface and saying you know in the grounds of reality this doesn't cut it anymore and maybe we need to adapt maybe we need to change and this can flow also to your income the way you provide income to yourself or others in your life because this is a venusian aspect as well it could be about your self-esteem and your body a venusian aspect as well and we have to remember, keep in mind that next week, not this week, next week, we have a very interesting conjunction. Kazemi, Venus is in Kazemi in the heart of the sun and Pluto is in Kazemi in the heart of the sun. And all of them are just, you know, aligned with Earth. One, two, three, Earth. This is a time that can bring great transmutation in relationships and income. You know, the work that you go to or the person that you're involved with. We'll talk about it in the next video, but this is a time that these, these uh, tensions can surface. So this supermoon is opposing Venus. And at least we will think about those subjects. Another thing is that Mercury, the planet of communication, input, output, navigation, is going to be at its uh, greatest Western elongation on the first. That means that just as that super moon is going to set over the western horizon, about an hour and a half before sunrise, Mercury in all its glory is going to rise above the eastern horizon as shiny as you'll ever see it. And you'll have about an hour and a half before the sun comes up to actually look at its glory. And if you do, take a picture, send it over and share it. I would love to see it too. On the second, Uranus, the higher octave of Mercury, the, the ruler of Aquarius, is going to turn direct after being in retrograde moment, uh, movement for a long time. And, you know, um, 
during the last couple of days have you been feeling that it's again like a Mercury retrograde? First of all, you know, we went out of the Mercury retrograde, but Mercury is still picking up speed. And I'm not sure it went out of its shadow anymore So uh, already. So there's still some Mercury retrograde uh, uh, in the air. But I always say in my videos that whenever Uranus, the higher octave of Mercury, goes into retrograde or steps out of retrograde, makes that change of direction, it feels as if, as if we are in the midst of a very strong Mercury retrograde because as the higher octave, Uranus is in charge of uh, internet communication, of electronic communication, of everything that is connected with Mercury but on a much faster plane. And during these days, there's so much malfunctions, uh, software's going berserk, internet co coming down, uh, schedules changing, people misunderstanding each other. So just take it into proportion and know that from the second onward, slowly, it's going to get better. Um, the moon is going to be in Cancer on the second, trining uh, Mars and Jupiter. It depends where you are in the world. It, um, try and see... Uh, how this works in your day because that would be a good time to actually set goals and achieve them to push things forward we have to be careful not to be too total not to be too intense because a little later than that the moon is going to oppose Pluto and square Uranus and that would be a time that we need to actually we we, we, we can light up and, and I don't mean it in a good way and and uh, and find that we're you know um, not in control of our emotions anymore so we need to really um, be a little detached and a lot more logical. Even if people uh, turn those flames towards us, we need to chill them down and, and calm everything. On the fourth, we have the moon in Leo on the North Node. Very positive, beautiful time that we could really enjoy life in. But we have to be careful not to watch our honor and respect too much, not to be too theatrical or dramatical, and not to be vain or arrogant. Because there is some self-respect and honor issues going on there because this moon squares that Mars-Jupiter conjunction. So we have to be uh, aware that there's a very thin line between, between us being assertive and aggressive. And that we, if we are taking things forward or if we are enjoying ourselves and actually playing with life, don't be too absorbed. Try to see the situation in general and... Be really careful not to come off as vain or too proud or, or uh, something like that. Uh, humility is a key factor on this day. And um, that's about everything I have to say on the 4th. On the 6th, we are starting a few days in which Venus, the planet of relationship, love and income, is going to be in Kazemi, in the heart of the sun. It's a great time to do a visualization of how you would like your life to satisfy you better or how can you make your satisfaction out of life even higher in the month to come. And take a few moments, visualize that. It's a great time. The ancients always said that when a planet is in the heart of the sun, we could actually channel that energy in a stronger, better way. And the moon on the 6th is going to oppose Neptune. So it's a day that, please, if you are a little forgetful, if you are a little confused, uh, the moon is going to be in Virgo and it opposes Neptune. So, you know, there's, there's a left brain, right brain kind of uh, merry-go-round there. We could, we could be critical over not being uh, critical enough in the past. And, you know, there's, there's a game there. Like, when should we let go and be more passive? And when should we remain in control and actually take things forward? And do what it is we need to do. So on that day, just be aware of these two energies playing part. And be rise, rise above them both. And try and use your right and left hand whenever they're needed. Um, as I said, next week we have a conjunction between Pluto and Venus and the Sun. And this is a time that could bring great changes in relationships and income. We'll talk about it in our next video. And I want to thank you for your comments and your shares and say that uh, if you want to study with me evolutionary astrology you can contact me and of course for private consultations any questions you might have i'm here have a beautiful week this is boy's father goodbye